Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pix Imperfect. How are you doing? Let me know in the comments. I hope you're having a great day and making it a beautiful one. So today we'll learn how to select and mask out translucent objects in Photoshop like veils, see-through fabric, so on and so forth, like this one. But we'll also learn sometimes when you choose a stark colored background, the subject just doesn't match. We'll learn a slick trick to make it happen. And as a bonus, we'll also learn how to extract shadows. I hope you enjoy this lesson. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you wish to go ahead and download any of the photos and follow along, check the links in the description. The very first thing we'll do is make a selection of the subject. You can use your favorite selection method. If you want absolute accuracy, you can use the pen tool. But for super fast results with the latest technology, select any of these three tools right here. The object selection, quick selection or the magic wand and at the top you will see select subject. If you click on it, the selection is pretty good. But if you zoom in, well, it's not that all right. However. If you click on this drop down arrow right there, this is available in the later versions of Photoshop. You can choose the cloud version and then if you try select subject, it's going to process it in the cloud. Now, if you're concerned about privacy, I don't recommend it. Well, still, it's crap. I expect it better. Anyway, that's fine. Once the selection is active, you can click on the mask button. Now for the most part, this is all right. And for the rest of the areas, it's not a big deal. Now, if you want absolute accuracy, you can always use the pen tool, but I've learned in life that whenever I tried to chase absolute perfection, I never ended up completing that task. Now, of course, if you were doing commercial work or doing it for your portfolio, or if somebody was paying you a lot of money to do it, go ahead and use the pen tool, I would. So it's kind of easier to just fix it with the brush. By the way, I'm just creating a background for now just for reference and then you can go ahead and select the mask take the brush white as the foreground color and fix it i mean most of the areas are just fine these little areas can be fixed it's no big deal there you go fixed top of the head fixed you can also open up the mask decrease the density density is like the opacity for the mask so you can see which areas are missing and then you can go to the mask and then paint those areas back Again, it's easier if you're using a graphic tablet and then you can fix these areas. You can take your time to do it. Do not forget to increase the density back to 100% and let us choose a different background. Something like this looks more prominent. Hit OK. Now the first technique is simply going to select and mask. So select the mask right here. Select any selection tool and at the top, you'll see the select and mask button. Now right here, your savior is going to be the refine edge brush tool. Select that, increase the brush size a little bit and just paint over it. That's all. And it makes it see through like magic. There you go. That's just incredible, isn't it? Take a look at it. Now you can similarly paint right here. Now sometimes it can accidentally make opaque areas see through like parts of the leg and make her the invisible woman. So we need to fix that. So select the mask, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the mask and now have a look. There are parts of the leg which have been painted as well. So take a brush, white as the foreground color. And here's another trick. You can change the blend mode from normal to overlay and change the flow to about 40%. What happens now is that with the blend mode overlay, if you try to paint white in the black areas, no matter how much you try, it won't do anything. It will limit your paint to the white areas if you have white color selected. So let's paint right here. Now you can take your time to improve it. You can hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the mask to view the layer. You can even increase the flow to 100% and recover these edges. All right, that's the basic idea. Take your time to do it. Now here's another trick. Move your head away from the monitor. Look somewhere else for a while. Enjoy the scenery outside if you have a window. Eat a cookie and then Look at it back again. You will see things that you might have missed. So right here, I missed the shadow completely. So let's paint that in black. That's not a big deal. Now, since the blend mode is overlay, no matter what I do, I cannot mistake it. So it goes both ways. So when you have black selected, it just won't paint on the white areas. And when you have white selected, it just won't paint in the black areas. So let's take that away. See how carefully it took care of the edges. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask. Now, what about the shadow, you might ask? If you want shadow, make a duplicate of this layer, press Control or Command J. By the way, if you duplicate something, it also doubles up on the transparency or the translucency. Control or Command J, 
it makes it more opaque. So if that's something you want, if you want to make the hair dense, this is also one more trick. But for right now, let's make a duplicate by pressing Ctrl or Command J. The top one is the subject and the bottom one is the shadow. Organization is important, name the layers. Now for the shadow layer, you can actually go ahead and delete the mask. We could have just made two copies early on, but we didn't know we would need shadows then. <laughs> now, take the lasso tool right here and make a rough selection around the shadow. Leave a little gap, okay? Something like this. And as you know, with the selection active, click on the mask button. Now, what does the shadow do? Darken stuff. Now, what is the blend mode which darkens? Now, some of you might say darken. Well, that's the right answer, but multiply is the blend mode which darkens with the smoothest gradient. When you have something that's 100% black, it's gonna show it 100%. And when you have something that is 100% white, it's gonna hide it 100%. It maintains that gradient and it also makes sure that it only darkens, doesn't ever brighten anything. So change the blend mode from normal to multiply. And there you have your shadow. But you see those lines, right? Now, can you tell me what is the color that the multiply blend mode absolutely hides? We just discussed it, white, right? So what if we make these areas absolutely white, right? And we can do that with our old buddy, curves. So click on the adjustment layer and choose curves. And right now, if we do anything, it affects everything, even the background. We want it to affect only the shadow. And for it, we'll create a clipping mask by clicking on this button. See this arrow right there? It's only affecting the shadow. Now take the slider on the right to the left. It's going to make the bright areas brighter. So once you do it, see that line went away. Now if you go extreme with that, Parts of the shadow will also go away and it can be harsh. If you're going for that look, you can go for it, but I'll keep it milder, like this. A little bit line is okay, we can erase that. And you can also make the shadows darker by making the darks darker by using this slider, but that's fine. Let's close it. And now select the mask, take the brush, black as the foreground color, make sure it's a soft round brush and just remove these lines. Now, don't forget, to change back the blend mode to normal. Otherwise, you'd be scratching your hair and bumping your head on the wall. I have done that. I don't want you to do that mistake. So let's erase the extras and also erase these areas as well. And we want this particular area because this was the shadow. And we actually have to remove it from the subject layer. So select the subject layer and with black as the foreground color, just remove that. Now, as I told you, you have to take your time to kind of do it. It will be perfect. Now, before we move on to the next step, I'm slightly cleaning up the mask. By the way, if you're wondering how am I making those straight lines easily, you just need to dab once, hold the shift key, dab at the other point. There you have your straight line. So there you go, my friend. This is the first technique to select translucent objects, see-through fabric, and you can choose whatever color you want. Yellow, green, blue, this kind of blue, purple, red, it all works out. However, there's a problem here. If you try to choose something contrasty, and that brings us to our next technique. If you try to choose anything contrasty like a darker color and the photo was taken on a brighter background, it can create issues. Have a look. It just doesn't look like it belongs here. So let's go with this one. It is just not matching. I love this color. So how do we make it match? Easy. Make a copy of this color, or if you're using an image, just make a copy, blur it, so that you don't have the detail information. Press Ctrl or Command J, place it at the very top. Now apply the same mask as the subject, but invert it. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click and drag the mask of the subject and drop it here. Replace it, yes. Now select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Now what do we have in this layer? This layer has everything but the subject. What we want to do is apply it only on the edges of the subject. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the I again to turn everything else back on as well. Now let's expand the selection. So hold the Control or Command, click on the mask to create a selection. Keep in mind, this is a selection of the outside, not the subject. So select, modify, expand. 20 to 25 pixels is fine. Let's set it to 25 and hit OK. Make sure it goes a little bit inside. Now we need to fill it with white. So select the mask, white as the foreground color. You can always press X to toggle between the foreground and the background, and then press Alt Backspace or Option Delete. There you go. Now it looks weird, but wait for it. Now this is a dark color. Now what does a dark atmosphere do? It darkens. Now what is the blend mode which we use for darkening? Not darken, multiply. So change the blend mode from normal to multiply. There it is. 
Now, this is matching, but it's it's terrible. It's really terrible. So we need to blur the mask out. So make sure the mask is selected. Let's go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. About 38 pixels look fine for me. Now, keep in mind, this is a huge image, 8,000 by 5,000. So it's taking a little while. Hit OK for now. It looks like an issue because it's applied all over the image. We want to limit it to the subject. How do we do that? With the help of clipping mask. So hold the Alt key, the Option key, and click on the line between these two layers. And there you have it. Want to have a look at the before and after? So here's the before, not matching at all. Here's the after. The light is kind of wrapping around her. But then again, it's also being applied on areas where the light is shining. We want to remove it from the absolute bright areas. Take a brush with black as the foreground color. Make sure it is a soft round brush and decrease the flow to about 20%, 40%, anything that works for you. Then zoom in and just erase from the bright areas like this. It's not a big deal. Now, some of you might be thinking, Unmesh, why are you not using Blendif? Well, you can use Blendif as well, but it can bring up unwanted areas too. For example, we are trying to remove the brights from the corners. If we try to apply Blendif, it will bring up these halos around the corners, which we have to deal with separately. So that is why in this case, doing it manually makes sense. Also doing it manually gives you more flexibility. For example, if you select the mask, take the brush and with white, if you try to paint this area, if you want more light wrap around it, have a look. You can paint in that background color. So before it, it was looking unrealistic, but you can manually dig deeper with the brush and make it realistic. So that is why in this case, just take the brush, black as the foreground color, and just erase it from the bright areas. I think that's most what we needed. Let's do it a little bit right here. But apart from that, I think it's done. Maybe a little bit here. You can take your time to analyze it. But let us go ahead and take a look. Here's the before, here's the after. Massive, massive difference. Now, if you want to make it even more dramatic, observe the light. The light is falling from her from the top. So the ground would be a little brighter, right? So let us go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer just above the background color. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then go ahead and choose curves. And let's take this slider to the left, something like this. Now select the mask, select the gradient tool right here. Black to white is fine. You can also go for white to black. And let us draw a gradient like this. There you have it. That's looking fantastic right here, even better. Now, after doing that, you might want some changes to the light wrap. So let's go ahead and select this mask right here. Take the brush, black as the foreground color. This area looks a little weird. So we're gonna just remove it, remove the excess. There you have it. And you can go on and on. This is so much fun to do. Let's move on to the next technique. Whenever you have a color separating the subject and the background, in those cases, you can simply use the color range. Have a look at this one. The green is separating the subject and the background and there is no color of the background on the subject. So we can safely go to select and then color range. Even if it was on the subject and it was not on the veil, we could still work with that. So right here, first of all, set the selection preview to none so that you can see everything. Now select the first eyedropper, click on the green right here. Right here, you see a preview of the selection. Whatever area is selected is in white and whatever area is not selected is in black. Now, I suggest you decrease the fuzziness to a very low number. Now, you take the plus eyedropper and start adding the different shades of green around the subject. One quick way of doing that is by clicking and holding your mouse or pen tablet and just draw around it. It also does the job. Takes the color of everything in your path. Now, increase the fuzziness. Right here, it gets to the subject. so. I'll stop right about at 122. Also, let's not forget the background is selected, not the subject. So let's invert it. And now hit OK. Click on the mask button with the selection active and there you have it. But there's a green color inside of the veil. So how do we get that away? Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose hue saturation. We want to target the greens, right? So let's go to greens and increase the hue and the saturation all the way to the right hand side. And now increase the range of colors which are being affected. Keep on increasing the range. And at this point, the skin starts to get affected. Stop there. So let's narrow down the range so that only those greens are affected. Make these sliders apart so that the selection is smoother like this. And on the right hand side, we can select a little more. And now you can bring back the saturation and the hue and adjust it according to your liking. I feel we can simply take down the saturation that fixes it and change the hue a little bit as well. And there you go, it is fixed. So here was the before, here's the after. You can also make sure this only applies to the subject layer by holding the Alt key, the Option key, 
and clicking on the line between these two layers or clicking on this button. You already know that. Now the hair is not completely selected. So you can hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on the mask, take the brush, not the eyedropper, the brush. You can change the blend mode actually to overlay and just paint back in the hair area. There you go, that's fine. Overlay blend mode will not let it leak. Hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on the mask button, and there you have it. Now if you still sense the green right here, let's go back right here, go to the greens, not the master, and then you can play with it a little more. Play with these a little more. There you go. Okay, that's nice. So here's the before. See all the green? Here's the after. There you go. Now if you want a little more transparency in the veil, select the mask and let's go to select and mask and with the refine edge tool, just paint over the veil again and it kind of helps it make it more transparent. Hit okay and there you have it. Let us do a quick little recap. In the first technique, you can use your favorite selection method to make a general selection. And then using the refine edge, just paint on the translucent areas, that's gonna fix it. Now, when you have a color separating the fabric and the background, you can simply use the color range like we did in the second example, but sometimes it can lead to green leaks. To remove that, we used hue saturation, targeted the greens, removed it. And from there, you can choose whatever background you want. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for tuning into this one. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Thank you.